Today it's all about the MacBook Air with the M4 chip. I'll unbox it, set it up and show you how I configure it as a passionate developer. You will learn which tools I install right after the setup and why this MacBook is perfect for both beginner and advanced developers. At the end, I'll share why I struggled choosing the right option at the Apple Store and what I might do differently the next time. Hi, I'm Raphael, a passionate developer and computer science teacher. Here you will find coding vlogs, step-by-step -step tutorials and motivation to help you start learning programming and to stay on track. <laughs> When opening the packaging, the MacBook Air is right on top, slim, lightweight and wrapped in a thin paper cover. We set it aside for now. First we have the charging cable, a braided USB-C to MagSafe cable for fast and durable charging. Next is the power adapter. Depending on the model, either 30 watts, 35 watts with two ports for an additional 20 euros or the 70 watt fast charger. I have the 30 watt model here. Of course, there is a small paper box containing the quick start guide and initial setup steps, but no more Apple stickers. When taking the MacBook out, I immediately notice its light, slim design, which I also appreciated in its predecessor with the M3 processor. With my previous MacBook Air, I already had the midnight color and knew it was quite prone to fingerprints. At the Apple Store, I debated for a long time between silver and midnight. Silver is easier to maintain as it doesn't show fingerprints as much, but Midnight simply looked the best to me. Despite the special coding and improvements from the M2 to the M3 model, making the surface less susceptible to fingerprints, they are still visible. In the end, I chose Midnight again, even though I regularly have to wipe off fingerprints. However, for my next purchase, I might opt for Silver. Right after opening the MacBook, I applied a privacy screen protector. This ensures that the display is only visible from a direct angle, preventing prying eyes from the sides. Especially in public spaces like cafes and trains, it provides additional privacy for sensitive information. At the same time, the screen protector shields the display from scratches and fingerprints, extending the device lifespan. I had the opportunity to test the Mac Mini with the M4 chip the same processor used in the MacBook Air. The performance impressed me immediately, whether multitasking, image editing or video rendering, everything ran smoothly and incredibly fast. I used the Mac Mini intensively for several months, working with large applications and LLMs, and it handled the demands effortlessly. However, I quickly realized that a stationary computer wasn't ideal for me, since I mainly work on the go and rarely sit at a desk. That's why I ultimately chose the MacBook Air, which offers the same performance in a mobile format. I chose the MacBook Air with the M4 chip because I previously had the MacBook with the M3 chip, but unfortunately with only 8GB of RAM. This quickly became a limitation, especially when running applications like Photoshop and Final Cut Pro simultaneously or working with large language models. While the M3 chip was powerful, the limited RAM often caused performance issues, particularly for demanding tasks. However, for beginner programmers, the MacBook with the M3 chip is completely sufficient, since programming, especially at the beginning, is not particularly hardware intensive. The MacBook Air with the M4 chip now comes with 16GB of RAM by default, providing significantly better performance for multitasking and resource intensive applications. After completing the basic setup, updating the software, minimizing the dock, enabling right-click and displaying battery percentage, I'll walk you through the first programs I installed to work productively, with a particular focus on programming. These tools and software help me work efficiently, write code and smoothly execute my projects. A terminal is essential for developers providing a simple way to interact with the operating system, run scripts and manage software. The default macOS terminal is functional but quite basic, so I decided to install Warp as an alternative. Warp offers a modernized interface that makes working with the terminal much more pleasant. It supports a range of useful features such as better auto-completion, built-in explanations for complex commands. These improvements make the terminal experience more efficient 
and user-friendly, helping me work more productively, especially with complex development tasks. I chose to install Google Chrome as my primary browser because it offers excellent performance and a wide range of useful features that are crucial for my daily work as a developer and computer science teacher. Chrome's developer tools are highly powerful and provide debugging and web application testing capabilities. Additionally, I use Safari and Arc, as Arc has a unique and creative interface, making it particularly helpful for efficiently organizing tabs and workspaces. Another essential tool for me is Visual Studio Code. It's a powerful code editor that can be customized with various extensions. Besides Visual Studio Code, I also use Cursor because it is specially optimized for working with AI. I installed Raycast as an alternative to the Spotlight Search because it's much more flexible. Particularly useful is the built-in store with numerous free extensions that further enhance my productivity. Additionally, I installed Coffee to prevent my Mac from going into sleep mode when inactive. This is especially handy when running long processes or reading content without needing to interact constantly. Homebrew is the best way to efficiently manage software and developer tools on a Mac. With a single command, programs can be installed, updated or removed without manually searching for downloads. After installing Homebrew, three commands need to be executed to ensure it is correctly integrated into the shell configuration, loads automatically in new terminal windows and applies the changes immediately without restarting the terminal. After these steps, Homebrew is fully set up and ready for package installations. Using Homebrew, I installed HTOP because it's a small and user-friendly alternative to the default macOS task manager. With HTOP, I can monitor all running processes on my Mac in real time and view detailed information such as CPU and RAM usage, process priorities and more. I use the Logitech MX Master 3 as my primary mouse because it offers the best ergonomics and is perfect for long work sessions. To optimize the mouse to my needs, I use the Logi Options software, which allows me to change button mappings, adjust mouse speed and fine-tune other settings. Additionally, I use the Keychron K6 as my keyboard. At the end of the day, it's essential to create a setup that truly motivates you and makes working enjoyable. The right hardware and software can make programming much smoother and more pleasant. It's not just about the performance of your laptop or mouse, but also about how you interact with your tools. The more comfortable you are with your setup, the more productive you will be. Take the time to put together a setup that suits you, whether you prefer an ergonomic mouse like the MX Master or a specific software like Cursor instead of Visual Studio Code or PyCharm. What matters is what keeps you focused and motivated. Once you have the right equipment, you'll find that programming not only becomes more fun, but also helps you progress much faster. So just get started. Build your setup, be creative and experiment with the tools that work best for you. The journey into programming can be truly exciting and with the right tools, you'll always stay motivated to learn and tackle new challenges.